Welcome to module 9.4. In this lesson, you create a custom steel connection. You can create a custom connection by using the break tool. This deletes the connection, but leaves the fabrication members as separate elements. Another option is to model a connection using the fabrication elements, and then use the customized tool to create a new connection. This connection can then be saved and reused around the project in other areas. Go ahead and open up Project A. The model opens in the 3D view. In this particular lesson, we're going to create a custom connection for one of the column base plates on the north face of the structure. Let's zoom into this area here, and you can see that we have a connection terminating on a concrete slab. Here, we'll need to create a custom base plate connection to connect the column back to the concrete slab. Let's begin by selecting the steel ribbon. On the steel ribbon, you'll note here we have fabrication elements. So we can create plates, and then we can create bolts, anchors, holes, or shear studs on those plates. We can also add welds, and then use the modifiers to shorten the column to the correct length. Let's begin by creating a plate. On the steel ribbon, select plate. On the modify create steel plate context ribbon, we first have to set a working plane. Click on the set tool. In the work plane dialog box, let's select the name and here we want 01 first floor. And then we'll click OK. Now that our working plane is set, we can now sketch our geometry for our plate. In the draw panel, let's select rectangle and we'll just basically sketch a rectangle roughly in this position here. Now to allow us to accurately dimension the plate, we'll first need to create a plane view. Let's select the view ribbon and on the view ribbon, we'll select plan views and structural plan. We'll create the structural plan on the 01 first floor and click OK. We can now zoom into our plan. Let's select the modify create steel plates ribbon and here we'll select modify to stop sketching. We can now use the temporary dimensions to set the size of our base plate. So here, I'm going to move the witness line to the centre line and we'll have 250 millimetres on the left hand side. We'll select this line on the right hand side. Again, I'll move my witness line to the centre and I'll set this to 250. For the depth of the plate, I'm going to set this to 500. So I can pick this line here and then use the temporary dimension and set that to 500 millimetres. So our sketch geometry is now complete. So on the modify ribbon, we'll select the finish edit mode. And we can see that the base plate has been created. However, you'll notice here we have a warning because the steel connections can only be seen in a fine level of detail. So let's set the level of detail to fine. And we can now see our plate. To set the properties of the plate, we can select the plate. And in the properties palette, you'll note here that we can set our plate thickness. In this example, let's set the plate thickness to 20. For the coating, we'll set this to galvanized. To review the plate in 3D, we can now switch back to the 3D view and we can now see our plate. We would also need to create a stiffener on the back of the plate to the face of the column. To model the stiffener, we'll need to create a section view. To do this, we'll select the 01 first floor. We'll zoom out and we can see that we want to model on grid 2. On the quick access toolbar, we'll select section and we'll cut a section through here that's going to cut through the slab but simply elevate the plate and the column. We can then double click on the hyperlink here to view the section. I'll set the scale of this section to 1 to 10 and then we'll crop the view to the correct area. Once again, we'll only see the structural connections in a fine level of detail, so we'll change the level of detail to fine, and we can now see our plate. Let's begin by moving the plate. We'll need to create a 25mm gap for grout. So to do this, we'll select our plate, and on the context ribbon, we'll select move. We'll pick a base point on the level, point the mouse up, and here I'll type in 25. We can now model our stiffener. To do this, we'll select the plate tool once again. For the work plane, let's select grid two. 
On the draw panel, we can select the line tool. And here you can see I can snap to the intersection and we'll make our stiffener 200 millimeters high and we'll set the angle to 60 degrees. And then we can complete the sketch back to the start point. To finish the sketch, we can select the finish edit mode. And in the properties palette, we'll select the thickness of 15 millimeters and also the coating here again to galvanized. Once again, we can switch back to the 3D view to see our model in progress. Now at this point, we might want to actually create a section box to help us model this plate a bit further. So here, I'm going to select the base plate and up on the context ribbon, we'll select selection box. You can now see that Revit has isolated the particular plates that we're working with. Okay, so we now need to create some anchors or holding down bolts. To do this, we'll go back to our 01 first floor. We'll zoom into our plate, and again on the steel ribbon, we'll select the pull down menu for bolts, and here we'll select anchors. We'll select the element that we want to add the anchors to, which is the base plate, and then press enter. We also now need to create the surface that the anchors are going to be attached to, so again, we can select the face of our plate, and we're now ready to create the anchors. To do this, you can see on the draw panel, we have a rectangle or a circle. In this case, we're going to use a rectangular arrangement of bolts. So we'll select rectangle, we'll trace the outline of our plate, and select finish edit mode. You can now see that four anchors are placed. In the properties palette, let's change the anchor type from US normal anchors and in this case here, we'll use a straight flat anchor. We'll also set the diameter to 24. And a bit further down the properties palette, you can now see that we can create the setting out dimensions of our bolts. So let's set length on side one to 400 and length on side two to 350. We can now see the anchor bolts have been placed in the model. Once again, we can select the 3D view tab to see our model in progress. Finally here, we'll need to cut back our column to make this the correct length. To do this on the steel ribbon, you'll note here that we have a tool to shorten members. So we'll select shorten, we'll select our steel column, and you can see here the column has had a shortening element applied so we'll set the length here to 45 and we can now see our column is at the correct length. Let's now create some welds. On the steel ribbon, we'll select welds. We'll select the elements that we're connecting. So we want to weld the plate and the stiffener and then we can press enter. We can now select the edges that we want to weld. So we'll select this edge on the bottom of the stiffener here and you can see in the properties paddock, we can then set the properties for our fillet weld. So perhaps here we'll set the fillet weld to eight. You can see that we can set our surface shape in here. So perhaps we want this to be convex. And we'll select the continuous option here, which will give us a continuous weld along that plate. Now Revit won't actually model the weld, but of course we can recover that with annotations and we can also see that in the schedule. Of course, we could continue to add further welds around the connection, but now we'll go ahead and create our custom connection. To do this, we'll select the connection tool and we'll select our column. You'll notice by default that it's going to add a generic connection. We'll go ahead and accept this by pressing enter. So a generic connection has now been added to the column. We can then select the generic connection and you can see in the 3D view, we can see that generic connection just in here. Let's go ahead and select our generic connection and up on the context ribbon, we'll select customize. In the create custom connection dialog box, we can then give this a name. So we'll call this one edge base plate type one and then select okay. You'll notice now that we have a little ribbon on screen here and of course we can either add or remove fabrication elements. So in this case I'm just going to use a window selection to actually pick all of my fabrication elements that I've added in. And then to finalise this we can select finish. 
I'll now remove the 3D section box and we can apply this to another column. So for example, you can see that we have this column here. So we'll go to the connection tool. So we can select edge base plate type one, select the column and then press enter to place the connection. Of course, again, we get a warning here to say that any voids or cuts created will be removed. That's absolutely fine. And you can now see that we have our custom connection added into this second column. Okay, so that concludes this lesson on creating custom connections.